everyone, Arlen here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to today is I'm gonna be cooking my double decker fudge, among other things. I have about three videos coming to you guys, one in quick uh, succession to the next. Uh, I'm going to be doing today, you'll see me in these clothes, <laughs> and I'm going to be cooking the double decker fudge, the cheesecake, and the peanut butter pie all today. But it's going to be three separate videos so we don't get confused and so one doesn't get lost in another. So uh, this recipe came from several different people through the years, and uh, I've kind of just used their recipes and combined it and kind of made it my own too. So. Uh, it's basically one of my lady friends who was a mom in the band uh, with me gave me this recipe and hers is the one that I follow the closest so uh, but anyway let's get started this takes a while this double duck <laughs> say that three times fast <laughs> this double decker fudge is labor intensive and you're gonna see the hand to come into this a little bit because he helps me uh, mix uh, one part of the fudge. There's going to be a peanut butter looking part of the fudge and then there's going to be a chocolate and peanut butter chocolate looking part of the fudge. So anyway, let me explain. Let me turn my camera, get it pointed down and a place that where you can watch me and we're going to get started making this luscious fudge. This tastes so good and it is Stacy's mom's favorite, absolute favorite. So I'm going to be packing one up as a gift for, for my aunt, and then I'm going to be putting another one in a tin that I can just set out and have everybody enjoy it. All right, let's get started. Be right back. Okay, as you can see here, I don't know how straight I am, sorry. There's camera angles, you know. Okay, as you can see here, I have a big old pot. And I use a big soup pot like this, or, or what do they call this, Dutch oven, uh, so that when my sugar mixture boils, it has plenty of space to expand and build. And I use like five cups of sugar. But anyway, we're gonna get started here. First of all though, let me pull you over to these little bowls over here. Because as you can see, I'm going to, as you can see here, I've kind of prepped them. And my poor recipe, look at this thing. I'll have this recipe in the description for you guys. I have nothing I can hold up for you. This poor thing is just pitiful. So, I'm gonna read off of it, and then I'll have it in the description for you. There's not, I'm not, I don't have anything that I can put up as a, for a screenshot for you guys. So look in the description for the recipe. I also have a blog. I'll put a link to a blog where I have the recipe in my blog too. So I'll give you a link for that. So anyway, the first thing we have to do is we have to pr do a little prep work first. So you get a the ingredients that you need are you need a 12 ounce or 10 ounce package of peanut butter chips reese's peanut butter chips you need cocoa powder you need butter a whole stick of butter you need vanilla i got this from our old country store here the amish country store shanks uh you need one jar of fluff, marshmallow cream is the same thing. And you need one can of evaporated, not condensed, evaporated milk. And then you need four and a half cups of sugar, white sugar. So what you need to do first though, is I need to prep these two bowls. This is going to be the two different layers, if you will. Well, the first thing I did was line a pan 13 by nine inch pan, not a nine by nine, a 13 by nine inch pan with aluminum foil. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of butter and I'm going to just rub the butter all over it. And that just will help the fudge not to stick. So I'm gonna do that while it's cooking. I'll spread that butter. So line 13, place one cup of peanut butter chips in a medium bowl, okay? So one cup of peanut butter chips. in medium bowl and set aside, okay? So there we go, set that aside. And the second bowl, stir together cocoa and melted butter. So I need to melt one half or one quarter cup 
of butter. So let me do that in the microwave and I'll be right back. Need butter and then a half of a cup of cocoa powder. and then one teaspoon of vanilla. And mix all that together. with these peanut butter chips on the top of it and they will do a little bit of melt in there while the rest of this is cooking. All right, so that is all you do to prep your two bowls. So we're gonna move back over here. Let me get rid of this stuff, hang on. I'm gonna start on medium heat. Melting my butter. The other half a cup quarter cup of butter, four and a half cups of sugar. Pull this over here. Let's just do it this way, it's easier. One. Two. Four. And a half. Marshmallow cream. And then you need to stir this. It says on the recipe pretty constantly. And I do keep a good eye on this, I really do. Excuse me. And, but I need to incorporate it all first. And then we let it come to a boil. And once it's boiling, don't set your timer until it's boiling. Once it's boiling, set your timer for five minutes. Not a minute less, five minutes. And that's when you stir constantly. You need to stand and stir it constantly for five minutes once it comes to a boil. Wait for this to come to a boil. And I do stir it to get the marshmallow incorporated in. It's not clumpy. And you're gonna see this, I'll put it into fast motion and you'll see it starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger in the can you know, when it comes to a boil. Then what we're gonna do, and we're gonna have to work really fast. Chris will come over here and help me. And he'll take one bowl and I'll take the other of the chips over there and what we prepared. And I'll pour half of this mixture in one bowl and half of it in the other bowl. And then the peanut butter mixture, peanut butter looking mixture, will go into the bottom of the pan and then the chocolate peanut butter chocolate mixture will be spread on the top and we have to work pretty quick so we're probably not going to be saying much maybe to one another but we probably won't be saying much i probably won't be saying much in camera while we do that because that is pretty intense and you have to work quick and it is helpful if you have someone to help you 
especially for you ladies who might have a little trouble with arthritis or whatever, it really is helpful to have somebody stirring that other bowl. You have to work quick with this a little bit. You know, this is more labor intensive than my other fudge recipe. This is much more labor intensive. So, okay, I'm going to go and butter my pan. So I'm gonna let this come to a boil. I'm gonna watch it, I'm gonna put you into fast motion. It's gonna to come to a boil. I'm gonna pause or uh, cook it for five minutes and then we'll be back and we'll be pouring. When you see me again, we'll be getting ready to pour stuff into these bowls and I'm gonna clean up this mess so nothing is in our way. in the peanut butter side because that'll be the underneath you know the bottom layer and then Chris has got the chocolate I've got the peanut butter so mine will go in the pan first but you need to stir this until it's everything is incorporated and it starts to thicken up a little bit and you can see why it is helpful to have somebody there with you to help you, if at all possible. I'll be honest with you, I've never tried to do this without Chris's help. Or somebody's help. So you can see mine is really starting to thicken up and his is too. So we're about there. I still have some bits of peanut butter chips in mine though. All right, I'm gonna put on a hot pad on my hand because I'm a little wimp and this bowl is super duper hot on the bottom. Wait a minute, let me get this spread out. Spread out the bottom layer. Push that aluminum foil back into the corners as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but my hand is so sticky, I can hardly. And this is the, the more, uh, you have to have a little bit more finesse with the chocolate because you need to be able to spread the chocolate all over. You know, the top layer. And try to cover up the peanut butter layer as best you can. Boy, this is setting up good. All right, now. Okay. Let's see if I can get this spread out here. Now, I always put this in the refrigerator to set, you guys. And I always store this fudge in the refrigerator. It's better that way. It's a very soft fudge as compared to, my other one is, is uh, pretty soft too, but it can sit out on the counter. This one, no, this one needs to be, in my experience, it needs to be in the refrigerator. And you all see later when I go to cut it, I'm gonna have to have let this chill for like two hours. So at least two hours. So it's gonna be a while before I come back. Of course, it'll be like the snap of a finger to you guys, but it's gonna be a while till I come back and, and uh, cut this up. But I'll show you how I cut it up and how I put it into you know my tins 
and get it all ready to set out on Christmas Eve. All right, there we go. Isn't it pretty? So I'll be back when I'm ready to, when it's nice and cool and I'm ready to cut it. All right, be back. Okie dokie, everybody, here I am. I'm back and it's been probably every bit of two hours, you guys. Every bit of two hours that this has been sitting in the refrigerator. Clean pan, well, almost clean pan. I got a little bit of peanut butter on it there. But as you can see, that lifted right out of the pan and it is set. And I'm just going to kind of push this aluminum foil down. And I'm going to cut this just like I did my other fudge. Only thing is, some of these pieces turn out a little bit wonkier just because this is a 13 by 9 and it's not an even number. So some of them just don't work out perfectly. But that's okay. It doesn't hurt the taste any. So as you can see here, I've got two little tins and these are so cute. I got these from World Market the other day. The only two tins they had left in the whole place and they were three dollars. So I'm going to put this kind of fudge in one and give it a give my aunt, give it to my aunt as a gift and then I'm going to put the other kind of fudge in the other tin and give it to her husband, my uncle. So they each have a little tin of fudge to take home and we cut a little hole out of my doilies because, you know, I want to be able to put my doilies down in here. So we just cut little holes in them. And there we go. Isn't that just as cute as a button? All right, so let me cut up this fudge. Ooh. And then the rest of this fudge will go in one of these bigger tins. Hopefully it'll fit. So let's see how far I get here. and cut halfway and then I go between the center the, where I just cut and the edge and cut and then I go to the center of that and cut oh I didn't cut that quite right that's okay center of that and cut. This is heavy stuff, you guys. Go halfway through. And I turn it. And I do the same thing going this direction. I'll speed through this part, how about? Now, as you can see, these are far from perfect pieces, but check it out. Oh, my goodness, you guys. I think I'm going to get maybe two or three. I'm going to cut that one in half. And this one in half. Fact, I'm going to cut all of these in half. everybody I'm done cutting was that a mess or what I I don't care for how that works out just because it starts out as a 13 by 9 inch pan I'm going to do a search you guys I'm going to do a search and see if I can't find a square pan that would work better because if I start out with the fudge being a square it's going to cut evenly you know I just don't care for how this worked out but anyway regardless my family doesn't care they're going to eat it trust me <laughs> 
They do not care what it looks like. And it doesn't hurt the taste any. And speaking of taste, I have one little piece here that I am gonna try. Now you guys, y'all know I love you if I'm gonna try a piece of this fudge because this is really going off my diet. I do not allow myself, I, I do a treat now and again, but not like this. I mean, this is really fattening. And as you can see, I just have a little teeny tiny piece, but I wanna taste it for you guys. This is scrumptious fudge, honest to goodness. Let me try. Mm. Y'all. Mm. It is creamy and moist and rich. <laughs> really, really rich and really, really good. It is a crowd pleaser. I Trust me on that. It is labor intensive though. And I will find a spot in the refrigerator to put this and my aunt's little tin because this needs to be stored in the refrigerator. Uh, or it, it'll just be, it, it just, it would be okay, but it would just get too soft. So I like it to stay in the refrigerator to be nice and cool and, you know, set up all the time. So that's it for the Double Decker Peanut Butter Fudge. Oh my goodness. All right, so let me do some final words here. <laughs> I hope you're going to see this video on Saturday evening at some point. Uh, and then tomorrow you should see either the peanut butter pie or the baked cheesecake, one or the other. I've done all three. The cheesecake is sitting here on the counter. It is cooling. The peanut butter pie is done. I finished my final words with that. <laughs> I'm a hot mess over here, you guys, I'm telling you, but I'm gonna get all this cooking done anyway. Anyway, so be expecting a video to, you know, after this one tomorrow, which would be probably Sunday, and then one on Christmas Eve too. So I'll have videos for you all the way up until Christmas Eve. Then I'm taking a couple days off. Let me just say that I hope that those of you who are suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain, I hope that you have someone there with you, taking care of you, helping you get through each day, helping you make each day the very best that it can be. I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where it should be or where you want it to be. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around. And I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. I hope y'all give this one a try. It's really good. Just keep it in the refrigerator. Just remember to keep it in the refrigerator. So with all of that said, I'll just say, until next time, <laughs> y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.